Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lab of EC270 Embedded Logic Design Monsoon 2021 semester. In the previous lab, we discussed about the how to design the sequential circuit. We discussed about the counter design, 8-bit counter. We discussed about the clock division circuit. And we also discussed about the FSM design, finite state machine using the Verilog. In this lecture, we are in this lab, we are going to discuss about how to use the FSM as well as combinational circuit for the practical application. So the practical application is the greatest common divisor calculation. So our main objective of this lab is to find the GCD of any two integer numbers. For example, here, I have the I need to find the GCD of 12 and 8. So the greatest common divisor of 12 and 8 is 4. Similarly, GCD of 35 and 49 is 7. In this lab, we need to write a very log code, which takes the two input number and outputs the, the corresponding GCD value. Uh, for this lab on one, we are limiting ourselves to the simulation, we are not going to test our code on the hardware. This is just to limit uh, because of the time limit we have. Now, how to calculate the GCD? As you are aware, aware about this, GCD calculation is very simple. You take the two numbers, say X is equal to 12 and Y is equal to eight. First thing you do is that you subtract the larger number with the smaller number and replace that larger number with the subtraction. So here you are going to subtract the 12 from eight and you are going to get four and Y will remain same as eight. Then again, you will repeat the same process. You will subtract the larger number, which is Y from the smaller number. So smaller number remains the same and the larger number is subtracted from the smaller number that is eight minus four, you get four and you stop when the both the numbers are equal. And in this case, your GCD becomes equal to the that uh, final number. The same process is repeated. We can uh, repeat the same process for the another number, say 35, and Y is equal to 49. So smaller number remains the same. So X is equal to 35, and Y is equal to 49 minus 35, that is, you got 40. Then in the next stage, we smaller number remains the same, 14, and X becomes 35 minus 14, that is 21. Then we continue with this next iteration. Here, X is equal to seven, and Y is equal to 14. And in the next iteration, X is equal to seven, and Y is equal to seven, so your, both the numbers are equal, so your GCD is same. So this is how you calculate the GCD of any two numbers. So writing the Python, Verilog, or C code is very simple, but there are significant challenges when you try to write a Verilog code for the calculation of this GCD. And in this lab, we are going to understand those challenges and come up with the suitable solution. So to write the uh, Verilog code for the GCD, so the, your module definition will be like this. Here, uh, you will have the input X in and Y in, and the output is say GCD out. And this is the module you want to write. Uh, depending upon your application, you can define the input size of appropriate uh, width, uh, depending upon the, your application requirement. Okay, so I think there is a mistake here. It should be some multi-bit number. It cannot be a just one bit number. So uh, this was uh, one of the assignment in the ELD course few years back, where students need to write a um, very long code for the GCD calculation based upon the discussion we did in the previous slide. So the student came up with one of the solution uh, which looks like some like this. So 
it is exactly what uh, we discussed in the previous slide. You have the uh, always at start, that is they have implemented this as a combinational circuit, okay? So this is the combinational circuit uh, where output depends upon the current state of your input. So they copied the current input in their local variables, okay? And they use the while loop and they uh, what they did while both the numbers are not same, they uh, subtracted the larger number from the smaller number and updated that corresponding number. And once the numbers are same, they, uh, the very low while loop will end and then output is will be equal to the one of the number. So uh, this uh, looks good. I think here it should not be X in X there. Okay. So there are two mistakes. This should be the seven down to zero. Sorry, six down to zero, and this should be the excess. Okay, so this is the code which was written by the student, and then student also did the uh, corresponding uh, simulations, and they they got the correct output. So you can see that well, it, they they got the correct output. So everything was good. Students were happy that they were getting the correct output, but still their solution was wrong. And why this happened? Because when they tried to synthesize the code or implement the code on the hardware, they got the error in the Vivado that this code is not synthesizable. What do you mean by the code is not synthesizable? That means this code cannot work on the hardware. There is no hardware exist for such implementation of such code. And why this has happened? Because the while loop in the Verilog code is not synthesizable. So you should not use the while loop, while loop in the code which is to be implemented on the hardware. You can use the while loop on the uh, test bench, but not on the hardware. And why the while loop is not uh, synthesizable? So for any code to be implemented on the hardware, you need a corresponding hardware block. In the while loop, uh, whatever you are doing inside the while loop is not a problem. It's a simple arithmetic operation, comparator operation. So you can always have a hardware for that. But the problem is here, okay? The first problem is that you are defining this as a combinational circuit. So the combinational circuit means you don't have the memory, your output depends upon the previous one. And inside the while loop, you, you are going to do this in the iterative manner. And what do you mean by iterative manners? Means this code will run with the some number of iteration. But how many number of iteration? This was this is not known in advance because this is dynamically decided. At the during the runtime, it has this, it has it is decided whether to stop. In the hardware, whenever tool tries to convert this code in the hardware, tool will try to build a separate hardware. for every iteration of the loop. So if your while loop executes three times, then you will have the first block of hardware, second block of hardware, and the third block of hardware. So and then output of one uh, iteration goes to the next iteration and so on. This is your input and this is your output. So, and this is what your combinational circuit looks like. So the Problem here is that since the while loop, we don't know in advance how many iterations are will be possible in this while loop. Tool doesn't know how many copies of the hardware to be created. And that's why tool tries to iterate over say certain number of times which are there in the tool settings and then it gives up. So for the while loop, the number of times the program goes through the loop depends on the given condition. It is dynamically decided, which in turn depends upon the real time values of the variables related to that condition. Hence, we can't use the while loop if you want to create a hardware on the FPA. But if you see all your signal processing, wireless communication, uh, machine learning application, most of them are based upon the while loop. 
So if we can't implement the while loop, then we can't implement those circuits. So without the while loop, most of the algorithms won't run on the FPGA and FPGA will be useless. Hence, we need to figure it out how to implement such algorithm which are making use of while loop on the hardware. So what are the options are there? We are going to discuss in the next video lecture.